uni joint and centre bearing replacement. I'm replacing centre bearing on a Ford Louisville. On inspecting this centre bearing, uh, getting it ready for the harvest season, I could see excessive movement. The first step that we need to take to replace the centre bearing is removing the universal joint so that we can access the yoke. The basic principle of removing a uni joint is using the cross shaft to hit out the cap. Because you don't have direct access to hit the cross shaft, you hit it via hitting the yoke, bringing it back to the truck. If you wanted to remove the back cap, you would hit the yoke here. If you wanted to remove this top cap, you would hit the yoke here. Before you get started, mark the yoke, the caps, and the cross shafts so that when you go to put it back together, you don't mix them up because they are wearing parts and they have worn together. Only hit the solid parts of the drive shaft, as you can see in the picture here. To get the uni in the correct position, you'll have to jack up a wheel and turn the drive shaft. A trick that I use for stubborn uni joints is to place a bottle jack and put apply pressure on the spot where you would usually hit with the hammer. This picture really shows how much movement there is in the center bearing. Uni joint removed, this gives you access to the nut on the yoke. Get a three quarter rattle gun and remove the nut. Remove the washer and then remove the yoke. To remove the yoke, you may have to get a hydraulic puller. I'll link to a hydraulic puller in the comments below so that you know what I'm talking about. Unbolt and remove the center bearing. Once again, you may have to use a puller. All right, you get your new center bearing. Sometimes you have to hit the center bearing and the yoke in place. This one slid on pretty easily. The yoke does need to be lined up. As you can see here, I've marked this one when I was disassembling it. You can see the two white marks. You have to keep the tail shafts in phase, in alignment. Fit a new nut. As you can see, this has Loctite on it, three quarter rattle gun to do it up. You might have to put the transmission in gear to stop the tail shaft spinning. Get your torque wrench and make sure it's torqued to spec. Bolt the center bearing up in place. The center bearing is using nylock nuts to secure it in place. A nylock nut technically should only be used once. Make sure the center bearing is sitting square. As you can see here, it is on slotted holes and can be moved back and forward. So try and get it square to the drive line. In preparation for fitting the uni joint, clean the holes where the caps are going to be bolted into. Also clean the caps themselves. I just use a piece of emery paper. With a clean piece of rag, Clean out any dirt that you can see inside the caps and also clean the dirt off the leading edge where the seal sits. Find two bolts that are long enough but have the same thread as your unicap bolts. Cut the heads off them to make two guide studs. These guide studs will make your life a lot easier. Lift the drive shaft up in place. You will have to tilt the uni joint and turn the drive shaft to get it in. Fit our newly made guide studs. Put a little extra grease in the cap to keep the rollers in place. Fit the cap, taking care to make sure the rollers stay in place. Push the uni joint cross shaft so that it sits up into the cap as you're pushing the cap into the yoke. Wiggle the drive shaft up and down, back and forwards as you wiggle and push and at the end you'll have to tap the cap just to get it all the way home. By having the cross shaft inside the cap, this prevents the rollers from falling down when you're tapping or pushing the cap in. The reason the guide studs work so well 
is that one, it lines up your cap so that it goes in square, and two, it lines your bolt holes up so that when you get your cap all the way in, your bolts will screw straight in. Fit the unicap bolts. You should only use these bolts once. Replace them new every time that you take them out. But in this case, I didn't have them, needed to get them back in, so I reused them, put plenty of Loctite on them. Make sure you torque them down. One last tip. You may have to cage one of the brake boosters, one of the brake chambers, to be able to turn your wheel. And finally, grease your uni joint. Make sure grease comes out all four caps. I have a, vi a previous video that I've done on doing exactly that, so pop over and have a look at that to make sure that you're greasing your unis properly. Make sure you also grease the slip yoke. What not to do, make sure at the end of the job that you don't forget to uncage the booster. There's plenty more where that came from. Go to fasttrackmechanic.com forward slash watch.